There are very few of these people. Close to none. They've always existed and will always exist. They live on different continents, worship different gods, but all of them possess a strength that is unexplainable. Their words are considered prophetic. Their deeds sometimes contradict the laws of physics. Our project is about them, these mysterious few chosen from above, the X Minds. Permanent noise, skyscrapers, endless trade centers. That's modern day America. A glossy world that has for a long time been seeping out of the confines of Broadway and Wall Street. But there is another side of it too, an original America, which still exists far away from the noise of overcrowded cities. On the vast expanses of wild prairies, where, just as it always has, the great Wakantanka spirit breathes life into every living thing. This is the territory of Native American reservations, the inhabitants of which are trying to save their ancient beliefs under the pressure of civilization. We're not the ones who came to white people. White people came to us. They tore us away from our lands like a tree deprived of its roots. They forbade us from speaking our native language, from carrying out our rituals. But who gave them the right to forbid us from praying and being cured by our spiritual leaders who know much more than your physicians? White people have long been torn away from Mother Earth. They have lost its great mystery. They will never understand us. Lakota Indians, who were forcefully moved to reservations 100 years ago, muse this way nowadays. They surrendered their ancestral lands to strangers, but saved the main thing, their great mystical rituals. The curing sun dances, which Washaska Wakan, the X mines have carried out for hundreds of years. Our ancestors have been keeping the great mystery for many, many years, transferring knowledge of the Vankantanka from generation to generation. In spite of the prohibitions of the 19th century and then in the 20th, all the way up to the 60s, but we've never forgotten about the sun dances here on Rosebud Reservation, to which people come with their problems, their desires, and their prayers. Filming such ceremonies was forbidden until recently. According to beliefs, the ritual would lose its curing strength as soon as people from outside would break its great mystery. We always try to explain why we don't give permission to photograph or film our ceremonies. The Sundance is a mystery to us and it will never become part of the show that Americans like so much. Try to understand, as soon as we decide to open the mystery curtain, the rogue spirit will come. Modern Lakota Indian settlements, alas, have long been lacking any cultural charm. They look rather like third-rate Midwestern American towns. Same straight streets, same typical panel houses, same stars and stripes flags, same churches, and even cemeteries with crosses on hills. These are the landscapes of the Rosebud Reservation, where nonetheless, Christianity still has not superseded ancient pagan cults. Evidence of this is the photographic retrospection decorating the walls in the tribe council building 
at the very center of a town by the same name, Rosebud. It started at the end of the 19th century when holy rituals such as the Sundance were prohibited and went, figuratively speaking, underground, creating a so-called mystery circle, Vak Pokya, which was kept by protector shamans. That period lasted for several decades before shamans came out from the shadows again, mostly to avoid losing our ancestors' customs. The protectors, rare images of whom are impressed on these walls, had authority beyond exception among the people. They were believed to have supernatural abilities, including communication with spirits, clairvoyance, and healing, for which they have frequently been called medicine men, that is, people of medicine, or Wachaska Wakan, ones who know mystery. These were outstanding tribal chiefs who, before relocation to the reservations, were thought to define their people's way. This transfer from a nomadic to a settled way of life broke the system of coordinates in which the Lakota were used to living. Many of them just couldn't adjust themselves to the new system. Like 50-year-old, jobless Bud Vaughn, who, like many other Lakota people, gave up the traditional native way of life. Like many other people, I live on welfare, and that supports me mainly. All the money is transferred to this card. $200 a month in total, which can be spent exclusively on food. Although it's not uncommon for people to sell their cards for drinks or drugs. Bud knows firsthand the dark strength of alcohol and drugs that once engulfed his soul. Illusion and reality nearly swapped places then. I don't communicate with old friends anymore as closely as before. I try to avoid noisy groups and bars because it told me my seducing spirit can come to me as soon as I let my guard down and say, okay, just this once, right? I am a man, but I don't want to follow the black road. I followed it for too long and lost too much. Bud could quite possibly have become one of those who lost the red way, or as Lakota people say, fell with a bottle in his, her hands, if he hadn't met an ex-person who changed his life completely. I first met him years ago when he invited me to a cleansing ceremony saying, you need this and that. That had an unbelievable effect on me, you know. First of all, here and here, and after I went to Nebraska from the Sundance, I met my friends and realized that I didn't want to have the fun the way they do. After another few months, my other buddy invited me to smoke marijuana, but I said, no, I can't do that. Otherwise, I will lose myself, you know. And this feeling hasn't left me since I first got to Keith at the Sundance. Keith Looking Horse, the spiritual chieftain of the tribe, the one who is called the Holy Pipe Keeper, the one who touched the great mystery on the Rosebud Reservation. 
Although Keith tries not to make a display of his special status, concealing himself under the mask of a rural cowboy, lest he attract unwanted attention to himself. We carry out our ceremonies safe from prying eyes. Only the members of our community usually take part in the ordinance, although there were cases when 200 or even 300 people participated. But usually it's a small group of initiated people, those who come here from year to year and those who really need it. Every person has his or her own way of healing depending on the disease. I can't speak about someone's feelings. I can just share my experience. When I came to a doctor in a hospital, he asked me, how did you heal? I told him I had been here. And then the doctor came here to learn what those guys cure each other with. And it was beyond him that Native Americans cure themselves with prayers, ceremonies, using just the energy of the earth. Such a story happened to me personally when I was a little bit younger. I broke a bone right here during a rodeo, and the doctor said, that's it, man, game over. Your hand will never be as strong as before. I was dreadfully depressed with the fact that I would never be able to perform in another rodeo and subdue my Mustangs as before because the whole shoulder joint was broken in splinters. You know, you weren't able to use your... At that time, my mom was there. She said, we'll make and I started praying and went to a Sundance and started praying together with my brother, repeating after him all the rituals until he came to me and said, stand up. Okay, I stood up. Lift your hand and reach out. But you know it doesn't straighten, but you try. I know you can do it. And I unbent it, and it was unbelievable, because I had tried moving my hand as much as I could, and it hadn't worked. But the Great Spirit freed me, and my hand started moving again. And such things happen here all the time. Unlike the tribal council officials, ex-mines keep themselves shadowed. They don't set up schedules of their pagan ministrations. People just know when and where they are carried out. Bud takes a glance at one of the roadside stores where people still remember his vehement past while heading to the ceremony on foot. Bud, you're not here for a beer, are you? Nah, I'm on the wagon. Come on, let's do it. Just some tobacco for me. Well, let me look. How are you doing? Well, working as you can see. And where are you going? To Grassland, to a Sundance. Who's Sundance? Keith Looking Horse, near St. Francis. How's your father? My dad's okay. Looks like he is healing. Great, great. Okay, I'm off. Okay, have a good day. The Sundance will last for a week. Have a great week then. About 100 people are expected at the ceremony this year. Most of them are long timers who have been coming to Keith for the last 10 years. Among them, Bud looks like a neophyte and seems a little out of place. Bud seemed like a very lonely person when I first met him. His weakness for drinking was a weakness in his spirit, his frustration before the world, which he had once been unable to stand up to alone. And I doubt anybody could have. That's why we gather in this holy circle to unite in prayer with the past, present, and future, to feel unity with our people. To understand the meaning of this spiritual message, one needs to take a look into the past when the Lakota people hadn't yet lived inside the barbed wire of reservations and millions of buffaloes pastured in wild prairies. The native ancestors of the modern Lakota wandered freely, following countless buffalo herds 
from the banks of the Missouri to the very branches of the Black Hills, which they called Paha Sapa, the heart of everything existing. According to legend, the ancestral homeland of the Lakota was in these Rocky Mountains, their ritual center where local shamans carried out their ceremonies, communicated with the spirits of ancestors, fasted, and spent many days in search of apparitions. The culmination of the whole activity was the Sundance, which was carried out in the Red Stones region. Mother Earth's core, the Cave of Winds, is concealed there, according to legend. The place where the great spirit, who allotted everything with living force, Wakan Tonka, appeared before the people. Since that time, Lakota Indians have worshipped the Black Hills as a life source, the place of the seven holy ceremonies, a place to which chieftains headed in search of apparitions. Somewhere here, Keith the Looking Horse acquired his guardian spirit and now directs those who have strayed in search of their path, their red path. It's not so easy to prepare yourself. Sometimes a person will spend their whole life on it, but Keith directs me, teaches me to pray and listen to the world, which I stopped hearing at a certain point until I acquired a connection to the wind, to its breath, and I resumed playing the flute. Translated from native language, Bud's way is the way of the song, the way to the sources, to the cave of winds, from which the breath of life and the melody of prairies appeared. That is, Wakan, which stands for mystery. Prayers are a special mystery. Even silence can be part of a prayer, and a song can be part of a prayer. Everyone prays the way that his or her soul asks for. But before participating in the ceremony, you must cleanse your soul and body with a fast make a voyage on the trail of ancestors to find and understand yourself. And only after that, you can come here, stand with all the rest at the holy tree of the earth during the Sundance. The first stop on the way is the White River, from the banks of which the Holy Lakota Trail of Ancestors leads to the heart of the earth, Paha Sapa, or Black Hills, where day by day, the song of the wind is born and runs over the grasses of prairies and herds of mustangs pasture as before. It is here in the vicinity of the Black Hills that an apparition came to the furious horse chief of horses running eastward and heaven riders chased them. In this way, the Battle of Little Bighorn, the natives' greatest victory in the history of the North American Wars was predicted. After it, the furious horse chief acquired the Washaska Walken, that is, one who learned the great mystery status. He overshadowed the other Indian chiefs with his glory for a long time. <laughs> Evidence of distant years still remains on the stones of the Holy Red Rocks in the face of the Black Hills where the first sun dances were once carried out. There is a sun dance portrayed in those pictures which are approximately 300 to 400 years old. There are some later juxtapositions present, but we can say with certainty that the Lakota have carried out their ceremonies on the Black Hills for centuries. 
it's curious that a special role is granted to the horse, which the Lakota people called Vashinka Vakan, that is, holy dog. Perhaps it's the depiction of a chieftain's guardian spirit. Perhaps that was the furious horse himself, or maybe it was some other ceremony. But what isn't up for debate is that one of the most important sun dances was carried out here. Neither is the fact that it was the Lakota tribal X mines who had carried it out before they buried their hatchets. We will never again live in teepees as our ancestors did, because technologies change the world and we change with it. But as long as this ceremony is still performed, as long as we fast and prepare ourselves for the ceremony, as did our ancestors, the Holy Circle will remain a door for us. Over a hundred years have passed, and the sun dances have become a healing ceremony for sick people, rather than a warrior's dance ceremony, symbolizing the strength of Mother Earth, Father Son, and the Great Spirit who gave people the Holy Circle of Life. Where everything in the world has four sides, everything grows, maturates, dies, and gets reborn. Like the Tree of Life, which was once one for all tribes. Now they are divided by the borders of their reservations. It unites the teepees of our clans that are scattered over the prairies and once again, it joins us by our roots to Mother Earth and by our crown to the sky and to Father Son. And it's our holy circle of life. United in it, we will be able to connect with the ancestors, with the spirits of the past, present, and future. The man in your left ear tells you what to do, so the man in your right ear never gets through. You try to be impartial when the world comes in, because none of us are perfect and everybody sins. The good Lord never told us, be true to your heart, but I... But this mystery was broken when settlers found gold on the Black Hills, and the holy Paha Sapa, the heart of all existing, didn't belong to the Lakota anymore, and everything is more like a noisy tourist attraction, the main site of which is Mount Rushmore, a giant base relief of four founding fathers of the American nation, a symbol of new America, where, by a twist of fate, no place has been found for its native inhabitants forcefully torn away from the land of their fathers. Before it was carved. Long before this monument appeared, there was a holy place here, which we called Six Forefathers, because of the number of figures made not by man, but by nature itself. They were our ancestors who received the Great Spirit's commandments here. If you look attentively at the rock, you can see the profile of one of them to the left of Washington's image. It's a kind of symbol of the fact that we haven't gone anywhere. We're still here, alone with our holy forefathers. The Six Forefathers Rock, known to most people as the Mount Rushmore, was a special revelation place for the Lakota. Like the Sinai Mountain, where Moses acquired his commandments. Although he called his God Yahweh, and the Indian prophets call theirs Wakantanka. Wakantanka stands for God, the great or Holy Spirit which we worship, the same way you do because there is only one God. His name just sounds differently in every language, but he is one for all. The creator has both male and female principles in him. The one who created the holy circle of life, created the world and populated it with many, many nations, each of which has chosen its own way to the united creator. And we also had our way before we adopted Christianity. And even after we adopted it, we kept the faith of our teachers, of our forefathers. To declare their spiritual rights to the Black Hills, 
the Lakota elders decided to follow the white man's way, starting the erection of a monument, even more grandiose in its dimensions, a rock base relief of the furious horse known as the Crazy Horse Memorial. But considering the native reservation's poverty, they only managed to collect the means to hollow out the chief's head. The place has become a stamping ground for all the furious horse's offspring who predicted his future with a phrase, someday I will return to you in stone. Only Bud couldn't come close to the monument. He just took pictures of the unfinished Healer Chief's monument to remember it later, the chief being still considered one of the most mysterious persons in the history of America. He was a real ex-mind. So before the little bighorn battle, the furious horse received vision of the fact that a battle would occur and that his people would win. And he scratched the vision on the rocks where you have already been. That's a special place to all our people and personally to me. In that same place, not far from here, there is the Cave of Winds where all the Lakota came out to earth. The white buffalo woman who gave the gift of visions to our sacred people appeared from there too. Bud, like any Dakota, doesn't see any difference between reality and myth, the world of spirits and the world of lives. To him, it's part of the united holy circle. All it takes is going deeper into the mountains where the song of the wind sounds as before, where everything around you is part of the united sacred space, Paha Sapa, the heart of all existing. Previously, I identified myself with the dominant culture, with Mount Rushmore, with rock and roll music. Now I see there is something more ancient, my roots, which I must not refuse and must not be ashamed of. That's my song. Everything in the world has its own song. Right here, at the Cave of Winds, Bud once heard himself. He heard the song which will sound when the time comes to bless the new cycle of life, the Sundance. But before returning with his song to the ceremony, he must visit the last place of strength, where Bud has had to fast for a day under the searing sun of the deserted mountains, among the dead silence of the evil lands, where once the sacred fathers sought meetings with their dark sides. But he has to overcome this without hiding in shadow, because there is no more shadow than there is life in this fruitless land where only spirits live. It's a path which cannot be called a pleasure trip, especially if you walk here as tradition and ancestral belief require. I greet you, evil lands, all the living and all the passed away, all the spirits of ancestors whose unseen shadows can show the wisdom of centuries. Keith says there's no death. You just need to look back at all the time to recall your past, your ancestors, to look to the future with children's eyes. Then you become part of the whole. You live out the sun dances of past years, which were held here.
On these prairies, natives felt and still feel themselves to be at the center of the universe, staying as if in the middle of the holy circle where the sun carries out its dance day by day. And as night falls, seven tribal bonfires are reflected in the constellation of Orion, just as the way the living and the magic ancestral way, the Milky Way, are reflected in each other. This vision of the world is reflected in the sun dance when the aster makes a full circle symbolizing the beginning of a new year, the renewal of everything, as well as a human participating in the most sacred, most mysterious, and most closed ceremony on the very place where seven Lakota tribes once united. We erect these teepees around the sun's holy circle. They symbolize the dwellings of our ancestors, whom we call on for assistance during the ceremony. Three of them are populated with women, four with men. Each teepee is a source of life. There are seven ways of life, seven laws which we have followed since our foremother, the white buffalo woman, braided the first teepee and transferred the great spirit's strength to us. Now Bud Vaughn gets in this symbolic circle of life after performing his cleansing ceremony. Actually, it's just the middle of the way, the very center of the Sundance when we establish the tree of life instead of the old one, and Keith will be blessing it. He has trusted me with an honorable role for the first time to open the sacred day for us with flute playing. The melody I found is suitanka, or wind breath, as many people call me now. That's my new name, which I acquired while searching myself. The meaning and the main symbol of the sun dance is a circle where four cardinal directions cross in the center at the tree of life, the roots of which are included. To us, it's like the cross on which Jesus Christ sacrificed himself and was reborn in a new life circle. We had people of the sun like that too, like Christ, who shed their blood for the sun, turning along its sacred circle. There is the tree of life in its center, which connects us with the earth by its roots and with heaven by its crown. These rare shots are of establishing the Tree of Life, where Keith the Looking Horse first appeared in the Washashi Walken, the Holy Pipe Keeper's outfit. There is no ceremony more secretive than this one. The strength of the Great Spirit is hidden in it. Its great mystery, which is able to wake such forces in Mother Earth, which white doctors couldn't even imagine. They are used to removing the consequences of a sickness, but not its root. To cure a sickness, all the community members must participate in the activity, but in such a way so that it would remain a mystery. It can't be shot on cameras because that would scatter a great force all over the world, which could lead to irreversible consequences. That's why our fathers gave us a commandment not to film the Sundance. Too much strength is accumulated here during these days, and this strength of the Great Spirit must leave the same way it came. Otherwise, the balance between good and evil spirits, between life and death, will be broken, and all the members of our tribe will suffer from that. But before these warnings, one of the most important moments of the Sundance, namely the one described in all textbooks, but seen only by a select few. It's the moment of sacrifice of pieces of flesh by each Sundance dancer, who have been chosen by the holy pipe keeper, Keith the Looking Horse. He is completely different at the ceremony where entrance is prohibited to those who are not initiates. There is one 
The main prayer is the thanksgiving prayer to the great forefather for the sky over your head, for the sun, for the land, for the wind we breathe in, for everyone being healthy and happy. It's a kind of joint prayer with the shadows of our ancestors. That's part of the mystery, a ceremony with all the community members participating and praying for each other's health and happiness in a joint prayer led by Keith. It doesn't matter whether you are in his circle or outside of it like Bud. This Hochkahoka is a crossing of all the tribal roads where everyone takes the sun energy in and listens to Mother Earth's heartbeat, dipping into the growing rhythm of the drums. Bud also starts singing along with the Sundance dancers. One of them must sacrifice the only thing which belongs to a person from birth, his or her flesh. A symbol of expiation of all the community members. Before heaven, before Mother Earth, before the Tree of Life, which according to Lakota beliefs, becomes a life-giving cross bean filled with the Great Spirit's strength by means of sacrifices and prayers. Within four days, until one of the dancers who wishes to remain unknown wouldn't share his vision with the community. Today was the main ceremony day. When we returned to the circle, all the evil spirits, all the enemies, all the sicknesses, closing it with our prayers, prayers of those who have come here with his or her desires, dreams, and apparitions, which become real here as long as we keep the mystery of this ceremony. This ceremony shouldn't be reproduced beyond the circle in any other form, lest we become victims of the dark forces. To keep some of the acquired strength, the chief gives everyone a personal amulet. For Bud, it's a vessel with last year's Tree of Life's sacred root and a bundle of wormwood. This grass can be used for fumigation and cleansing your house when you take its stems and distribute them according to the cardinal directions. There were no corners in teepees. After that, I will have to pull off the seeds and distribute them around the house, but only in a month, not sooner, and to drink tea with the tree of life's roots in order to have a link to this place for a year. I will have to do that when I feel it inside, but not tonight, not tomorrow. Much time will pass before I will need it, but I will need it for sure. Healing native magic for outsiders is based on the masterful use of medicinal herbs. For native elders, the medicine of the ancestors is a great mystery, which doesn't need explanation. In regular medicine, we are used to getting a medication and it helps right away. Actually, it just diffuses a sickness. Our seniors used to say this, everything on earth has its goal. A sickness is just a penalty for a person who has turned off the red path. Everything follows a ritual here, and a person gets everything from the earth with no medications. I don't believe medicines cure. I believe in just one thing, in the peace pipe, which stands for peace and secret. Here at the Sundance, everyone shares their own experience, their worries, their thoughts, and their aggravations with the world of whites. The fact that you have appeared at the healing ceremony of the Sundance is not a good, but an evil sign. White Man's TV is a rogue spirit to us, which takes the mystery away beyond the holy circle you will go away to your country, but we stay here, but already without our mystery. 
He says these words with a special bitterness because he understands that he is unable to oppose the pressures of civilization. You were something distant and dangerous. You had the Iron Curtain. That's what we were taught. Once someone said Russia, everybody tensed, you know. And the fact that you're filming this, I can't wrap my head around it. Perhaps Bud, who is listening to Curtis, respectfully as local etiquette requires, also feels a sense of invasion when it comes to us. But he does not share the same distrust of the modern world that most of his fellow tribesmen have. The main thing is to be honest, to be kind and honest to yourself and to other people. As our ancestors used to say, the more good you give, the more good comes to you. I hope our chiefs, our ex-mines, will keep it for the offspring, and I will follow their narrations as much as I can to return to the righteous way. It's hard to say where the new Red Chief will lead the Lakota. He won't share his hopes with the world of white people who have mocked his people's faith for a hundred years. That's why he prefers keeping silent, as do many other native people. Silence is a part of a prayer to the Lakota, a conversation with Mother Earth, with the sun and the ancestors whose tombs are part of the holy circle. Beyond life, My grandfather worked all his life, as did my father. What happened to me broke the holy circle of life. I strayed, but Keith, his ceremony, helped me to find myself to return to the ancestral path. And I hope my grandfather would be very glad about what I have done and overcome. And I hope very much that I am on the right way. Perhaps Bud would have found refuge in this cemetery if he hadn't heard his song in time. If he hadn't started over from scratch and found his Indian name, Suat Anka. But the main thing is his return to the Red Way, the way of the sun, as thorny as the whole path of his people living on the crossing of two worlds. And until flutes won't fall silent and the echo of mysterious ritual drums the Lakota people will follow their shamans towards the forecasted future over the sacred path.